Aria Healthcare, looking after you always. Proud sponsors of Real Health with Carl Henry. Hello and welcome to Real Health with me, Carl Henry, in association with Leia Healthcare. If you were asked what the most important emotion is, what would you say? Happiness? Love? Empathy? Well, my next guest says there is a case to be made for awe. One that can be hard to define, but something we should seek out and improve in all of our lives. Dacher Keltner, award-winning psychologist, expert on the science of emotion, and the author of Awe, The New Signs of Everyday Wonder and How It Can Transform Your Life. All the way from the States, Dacher, welcome to the show. How's it going? It's great to be with you, Carl, and it's, it's going well. I'm looking forward to this chat. It's a really interesting aspect of health. And when someone publishes a book and says, you know, this can transform your life, uh, it's always a big interview and an important interview. So tell us, you know, tell us about awe. Uh, you know, it's in the book. There's a very strong statement. You say people always ask how to live the good life and you say you have the answer. Well, let's open with that. What's the answer? The answer is awe, right? The awe is the feeling we experience when we encounter vast mysteries that we don't understand. Uh, we can feel awe about nature and moral beauty and art and music and spirituality and even complicated things, uh, as I write about in the book, like the end of life. And I wrote the book watching my redheaded brother with deep Irish roots um, pass away. Um, but the, the reason I wrote the book for a broader audience like your audience, Carl, is that you know, I've taught human happiness and health to literally hundreds of thousands of people in person and online. Uh, people often ask me, like, just give me one thing to do uh, that will make my mind and body stronger. And and uh, I think the science suggests awe is a, a good candidate. You know, awe, um, it, it reduces our daily stress. It reduces physical pain. It gets us to think more clearly about our lives. It gives us a sense of purpose. It reduces our sense of loneliness, which is epidemic in many parts of the world today. And then it's good for the body. You know, our labs found it's good for your heart uh, and it benefits your immune system. So, you know, as I grappled with the loss of my brother, Rolf, uh, and really felt deprived of awe, I went in search of awe, which is why I wrote this book, Awe, uh, and enjoyed its benefits. So for people listening in who aren't sure of the definition of what awe actually yeah. is. Let's start. I think that's a really good place to start. So you've teed it up really nicely in terms of how powerful it is. But I suppose tell us the definition of awe. What is it? Yeah. And, and you know, that is a hard question, Carl. <laughs> and, and I took inspiration from the great Irish philosopher Edmund Burke. And he said, you know, when we encounter things out in the world, be it a person or an idea or a, a form of culture, like a painting or a building, or a piece of music, um, the, the two key qualities to awe are, Burke wrote about power, and I call that vastness, right? Vast vistas of the sea, vast skies, vast courage in a human being. And then Burke wrote about obscurity, uh, but I call it mystery, right? Which is you see something and you, you think, I can't make sense of how kind that person is or how beautiful the rainfall is, or how incredible that piece of music is. You don't understand it. So vast mystery are the two key ingredients of awe. And, and, and that's when we know it, right? You, you encounter something, you're like, God, this is so overwhelming. I'm tearing up. I get goosebumps. And I don't know what's going on here. That tells you you're experiencing awe. So to, 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 to dumb that down a little bit, it, it, but, you're, but what you're basically saying is it's that sense of wow. It's a sense of am amazement about something. So like if you go, I don't know, I'm trying my last, the last time I had that, I was out paddle boarding out in the middle of the Atlantic, literally with, 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 with someone I knew. And there was a sense of, oh my God, it's really deep and I'm really far out. And that sense of the ocean is just epic. And that sense of just wow about it. And that's all in a very simple yeah. way. You know, Carl, you asked such a, a great question with a wonderful story, and that is all, right? It's vast, it's mysterious. How could a human be paddling on the surface of the water? But people often ask me, you know, awe is so, so hard to pin down with words, right? So give, what would, how would I know I'm feeling awe? You know, I watched my child born, and I, I just am overwhelmed with emotion. And we've actually learned a lot scientifically that we feel awe, a good signs of awe, for example, are when you say, wow, or you go, whoa, uh, when you tear up, that's a very specific physiological response that really is in the recognition of something sacred. 
Um, when you get goosebumps rushing up your arm, have you ever had those, Carl? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, Carl. Think, I'm thinking of more examples for you for, uh, from an Irish audience perspective. And the la one I can think of is that when the Irish rugby team played New Zealand and won, and it was like, wow, we just beat the best team in the world. And that was an awe-inspiring moment where it really, it really, it, you can almost feel it seismically changing things when yeah, something and, like that happened, you know? And sports are a common source of awe because it's vast that the Irish team would beat, you know, the, the All Blacks, right? Um, and, and it's mysterious how they do this. It's so overwhelming. But then you know you're feeling awe when you're, you're cheering, you feel saying, wow, you're tearing up, you're embracing people. You feel warmth in your chest, perhaps. You get the goosebumps. So there are a lot of ways in which we can now pretty, pretty precisely say, no matter what the context, we, we can identify whether you're feeling awe. My final example, purely because I can almost hear that, and, and the why I'm coming back to it is the fact that awe is something that is, you attach it to something. And then you every time you hear or associate something, uh, the, the same thing, it attaches again. So my, my, my example for that would be river dance. That every time you hear the river dance tune, I'm just, yeah. you, you can feel the goosebumps. You can, you can almost, you're <laughs> transported back 20 years ago to when you saw it on television in the Eurovision. And every time I hear it and I, I listen to it regularly, it brings you, it just brings you back and it brings you, it stir it stirs something within you, something almost tribal to 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 run faster in a race or to do something kind of that pushes you out of your boundaries because this song brings you to an awe inspiring moment. I, I'm sensing that you're an awe junkie, Carl. Absolutely. <laughs> With your examples, <laughs> you're obvious. already you're already clearly uh, an expert in this realm. Yeah, you know, this is one of the great mysteries that I they take on in this book, Awe, which is how music uh, makes us feel tribal, which is a central hypothesis right now. It's really remarkable. And I ask our listeners to answer this question. I ask it to people I teach all around the world, which is what is a time, describe a time when you've encountered a piece of music that moves you to tears and tells you who you are in the fundamental sense of your identity. And that's what music does, how it creates awe, which is that it embodies and sounds like your culture. When you hear it, it will, it, will, it will really reveal and speak to you in terms of your central themes. I am Irish. I hear the river dance song. There's all the quality of the music that is about Ireland, right? And then you feel united with, with your tribe, as you said, or your, the Irish people. You know, for me, it was the Beatles and the Sex Pistols. And, you know, just because it spoke to me in terms of my identity and music brings us all because it collects us, it connects us to the collective, which is remarkable. And what does the science say then? So I know what I feel when I hear that song or, yeah. I, you know, I, I can tell you very tangibly about what, what, what I feel. But from a scientific perspective, what is it? What happens? It, you know, Carl, people ask me, like, how do I go find awe? Um, and we're actually very good at creating awe. And one of them is through music. Uh, and there are two realms of awe. Uh, nature, get outdoors, garden, you know, look at the beautiful landscapes or Irish sea or what have you. And then music and what it brings us is calmer stress-related physiology, better immune profile, uh, a better ability to concentrate and to handle daily stresses, right? Music and nature make us feel content and at peace. Like, oh, I see how I'm part of something larger that really matters. And those are hard things to find these days. And music and nature and then other sources of awe bring it to us. So it, I suppose it centers us. It brings us back to a place yeah. of calm. And from that, we can go and deal with the stresses of life or the traffic in the car or whatever it may be. So tell me more about the, 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 the wonders of life and tell us what yeah. they are. Yeah. I'm fascinated Thank, you. Thank you. Thank um, you. You know, we started with a definition of awe. Uh, awe is the feeling you have when you encounter a vast mystery that you don't understand. And then like you were saying earlier, the, it really, it's about things, right? Awe isn't just the abstract uh, feeling of, of encountering a vast mystery. It's about particular contexts of life. And so, Carl, what we did is we actually surveyed people in 26 different countries. And all we did is we said, write us a story of awe. 
right? When you encountered a vast mystery uh, that you didn't understand, we had 2,600 stories. Many of them are in this book. Um, they're astonishing. We got speakers of 20 languages to translate those stories because they're from Japan and China and India, UK, you know, parts of Africa, Mexico, etc. And then we categorize them and into eight wonders of life. And the book has a chapter on each, which is the moral beauty of other people. Uh, I distinctly remember, if you don't mind my recalling this, a, a mom from Ireland whose daughter was born with club feet and she learned how to dance, right? And her, the mom watching her daughter on stage and her moral strength brought her to tears and awe. Collective movement, like at the rugby game, uh, nature, music, which we've talked about, visual patterns, right? Buildings, textiles, paintings, spirituality. A lot of people find awe, mystical awe, in contemplative spiritual practice. And then two final ones, which are um, the big ideas. You know, you might have the big idea of, you know, evolution or free markets. And then, you know, and this one really struck me is life and death. We feel awe at the mystery of life being born. And then when it leaves us on this earth, which is what I, you know, saw my brother's life leave that led me to write this book. So those are the eight wonders. They're a great roadmap for finding more awe, right? What do you, which, which wonder speaks to you? Go find it. Folks, you're listening to Real Health with me, Carl Henry, in association with Leia Healthcare. This is fascinating. This is right up my alley. It's it's, it's different, but right. it's it's really it, it's really interesting. And like all of those, the, the wonders of life that you, you've chatted through, would you encourage people to include some of those more in in their normal lives? And some of them are quite, you know, like nature, for example, is becoming very trendy in terms of forest bathing and you know, the, the power of the sea and all of that. Um, so there's some obvious ones in there, but also to, to delve deeper into the slightly less obvious ones. Yeah. Thank you, Carl. Um, yeah, you know, I'm a textbook case study, right? I, I was in grief. I lost my way. I felt very disconnected and was really struggling. And I said, I study all, I'm going to go find them. And what I recommend people to do is what I did, which is be open wander, approach mystery, think about realm, those wonders that are easy for you and build on those, right? So I hike every day, I backpack, I love the mountains. I went, I did more of that. Think about pursuing forms of awe that are, are a little bit trickier and harder, right? So uh, for me, spirituality, I wasn't raised religious, but I started talking to ministers, went on retreats, just hear about the spirit. Uh, I, I listened to music. Uh, that both was easy for me to feel inspired and to tear up, and also that I didn't understand like classical music, and, and it brought me a lot of awe. Um, another one that people, it's really interesting for people to think about that's more challenging in finding awe is the big idea, right? Um, like, what are the ideas you care about? What, and for me, it really surfaced. Like, I really care a lot about justice. And so I found myself in prisons and helping veterans, right, just as part of Awe's work. And finally, you know, I, I don't know, I think Ireland is more sophisticated at, at handling the end of life with your wake tradition and the like. In the United States, how we handle the end of life, which is an inevitability, is impoverished. And so I really grappled with what does this fundamental truth about life mean, right? that it ends, that the people we love pass. And, and so I encourage people to go after the easy ones for them. You paddleboard, keep doing it. Build on the more challenging wonders and see where it takes them. It is interesting though, on that list, there isn't anything like money or possessions or, you know, and, and a challenge on that one a little bit. And like, I would get all looking at a supercar. I'm into cars, I like cars. So like, you know, <laughs> I see a Ferrari go down the street and A, it's slightly jealousy, but B, it's like, oh my God, it's a Ferrari. You know, it, there, there is yeah. a sense of, isn't that just the most beautiful thing you've ever seen in, in, in a way? But, you know, on, on that list, there isn't, you know, money or possessions don't really come into it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, this list, as I say in the book, it's just, it gets about 90 to 95% of the responses, but there, there were examples that we didn't, that didn't, you know, warrant a full wonder of life cars, food, sex, you know, um, and clearly we find awe in those realms too. Um, but you make a really important point, um, Carl, which is that 
and a lot of people have written about this, which is that there is the world of material possessions and transaction and money and, and consumer goods. That's one realm of pleasure, right? And it has its own laws. There's another realm of, of meaningful experience, which is awe. And awe is really independent of just the transactions of their ordinary life. It's about meaning and purpose and even spirituality for a lot of people. It doesn't operate according to the laws of buying something. It's, it's different. And, and I, think that's, I think that is wonderful in these times because it tells us you don't need money to find awe. You don't need to travel to find awe. You don't need to have a fancy job or a, a, to be a, a, a knight or what have you. You can find it right around you in, in the wonders of life. And one of the things you say that, you, you know, we can find awe in people's kindness, for example. Yeah. But it, yeah. is it fair to say in the world that we live in with social media and where people, you know, spend so much of their time, it can become harder and harder to see that niceness or kindness because so much of social media can, can be the flip side of that. It can, it can be quite negative and quite kind of quite, uh, quite depressing or tough to, to, to look at. You know, Carl... You know, I teach a lot of young people who are depressed and anxious and spending more time on smartphones than ever imagined, you know, anywhere from eight to nine hours a day. We know that's hard on their psyches as for any, any person. Um, and one of the reasons is um, those, um, the, the digital media, the new social media are not designed to honor this very deep human tendency to be morally inspired by other people. Jonah Berger's done wonderful work that I write about that, you know, we love sharing morally inspiring stories of, of moral beauty and awe of a stranger helping somebody. Uh, the new social media don't profile those. So yeah, I, you know, I challenge the young people that I teach to get off their devices uh, or to be intentionally aware of what they're looking for and find, find the right the truth about human beings, which was we have a great capacity for kindness and courage. And you also worked with uh, Disney Pixar on the film Inside yeah. Out, which I'm sure lots of our, our, our listeners will have seen. Tell us a bit more about that and what you uh, what you worked with them on. It was awesome. You know, Pete Doctor, the director, called me up. I worked on Soul, his other film as well, and there's another Inside Out coming out pretty soon. Um, yeah, you know, they would bring me in from time to time and, you know, every few months and like talk about the science of emotion. How do we express emotion? How does emotion influence our memory? Do we have signature emotions like in the film Riley uh, is really her signature emotion is joy. What's the emo why do 12 year old girls get so sad, uh, which is really the central theme of the movie? What is sadness? Um, we have great answers to these questions from the science of emotion. And they really, you know, Carl, it was very humbling when they called me to be a consultant. I literally thought, I'm embarrassed to say like, maybe they want to use my voice in the film. <laughs> <laughs> I have a terrible voice. But, you know, and then I was like, maybe they'll ask me really technical questions about scenes, like what color should envy be or what have you. They just wanted to know about what we've learned about the passions, you know, how it guides thinking and memory and social life. and. And so it, I remember seeing the first uh, screening of the film when it was about two thirds done and, and tears just rolled down my cheeks. And I was, I got goose, I was awestruck because look what art can do for, uh, in getting us to think about scientific discovery, what emotions are. It was, it was an extraordinary experience. I hope you liked the film. Oh, very much so. And, and to finish then, so very, for our listeners, what you're really saying to them is that, you know, whatever awe, whatever inspires you or gives you that wow emotion, that's yours. And, and it, it, whether it's one of your eight or whether it's outside of that, but the key thing is that it's very, it's a powerful emotion to, 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 to feel. And if you're not feeling it, keep searching for it and keep searching through nature or through music or through film or whatever it may be. To, to, to get that emotion because we scientifically need it and we can scientifically benefit from having it in our lives and having it, those experiences within our lives. I think it's the greatest, I, I mean, it is the, the most powerful pathway to health and well-being. You know, Einstein said it is just the human emotion and without it, we're not alive. Um, and I really encourage people in this time 
post pandemic to look at those eight wonders and and go go after a few of them and then build right because it it has many goods to bring us well fingers crossed after listening to the episode that's exactly what they're going to do Dakar, thank you so much for joining us all the way from san diego we really appreciate it remind us of the name of the book the book is called awe the new science of everyday wonder and how it can transform your life Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us, folks. That is it for another episode of Real Health with me, Carl Henry, in association with Leia Healthcare. You know where we are, at Carl Henry PT on Instagram, realhealth at independent.ie. If you liked what you listened to, don't forget to rate and review. We'll see you next week for more Real Health. Slow and Gafo. Leia Healthcare, looking after you always. Proud sponsors of Real Health with Carl Henry.